Hello and welcome to Now Is The Time. I'm Mary Crowley. You know, we have an exciting program here today in the studio with me is Prophet Stacy Mitchell. He was part of the Pensacola, sorry, Pensacola Move of God in Florida that actually happened on Father's Day. And the thing about God that he's so significant with is he's a God of dates and numbers and times. You know, the Jesus movement uh, started here in Southern California, but a very significant thing happened on Mother's Day of 1980. Lonnie Frisbee was invited to share his testimony at John Wimber's church, and the power of God hit that place, and it blew up into another movement where the Vineyard Association of Vineyard Churches exploded. Well, then on Father's Day on the other coast, and, and I'll talk to Stacy more about this, Steve Hill was invited by Pastor John Kilpatrick to come and speak a message on Father's Day when the power of God ended up hitting that place and it erupted into a move of God. Welcome to the program, Stacy. Mary, it's, it's an awesome pleasure to be with you and be in California and for Azusa Now. Yeah, Azusa Now, and that's going to be coming, you know, on Saturday, April 9th, just in two days at the USC Coliseum where we're hoping over 110,000 people are going to come together in unity and uh, unite together as a body and believe that another Jesus movement, another Azusa Street, greater than that, those movements, is going to erupt. Amen? Amen. 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 So tell me a little bit about uh, Pensacola. You know the history. Steve Hill was invited by Pastor John Kilpatrick to yes. come and share a message. Yes. Tell us the story, Stacy. Well, um, you know, a lot of times in church, uh, Father's Day is a day that just uh, people go through routine, routines. You know, Kim Patrick, I wasn't there that day. I would have loved to have been there that day, but I came, I came later on uh, in 97. started in 95, but I've heard so many of the stories personally uh, with Steve and John telling the stories. And uh, it was just a Father's Day, and, and Pastor Kilpatrick was not going to, he didn't even want to come because of what he's going through. He just lost his mother. Uh, just lost his mother. You're talking about Mother's Day. And, uh, you know, the Bible talks about when someone loses someone in the Old Testament, then God will stir a person's heart, you know, and uh, what we were talking about. But uh, So there was uh, a time of grieving he was going through. Yes, yeah. And so he invited Steve to come. Yeah. But they was, had been praying from what I've researched, and you know this better than me, they'd been praying that God was going to do a move of his spirit, and they'd been fasting and praying for quite a while. Isn't right. that true? Right. That actually, uh, Pastor Kilpatrick did a, what, a lot of pastors would consider dangerous, turn Sunday night into a prayer only night. And it happened for a couple of years before. So they were they were seeking God and not for just a little time, for a long time. And uh, he had the uh, Father Day service and he was going to uh, give a, um, a trophy or a momentum to the best father of the day. So he tells the story that he wasn't going to even go. He was going to just send a word that he wasn't going to come. You don't want to miss God. That's a, mm -hmm. that's a word of someone. And uh, he come, and he said, because he thought of the little boy grabbing his leg that always called him, you know, like Papa. He meant so much, Pastor Kilpatrick, to this boy. So he wanted to come and present this award to the father, the father. But God had another plan. And the brother Steve had come, and as a missionary, and had already been signed, you know, planned to come. And uh, Steve had been touched. You know, when you start studying revival history, find out where, you find somebody on fire, find out how they got on fire, <laughs> amen? Because Brother Steve had went to uh, many places, but he had just come back from a touch over in England. And uh, he, got, he got hit by the power. Steve's always, always talking about being hit by the power. That's what Brother Stacy talks about. So he got hit by the power. Steve got hit by the power. Over in, an, in, in another England. land, yes. So he come back talking about it all in America, well, uh, pastor let him have the, the pulpit, and if you watch, you can go watch the original uh, download from Father's Day on YouTube. And I tell people now, hey, you can go see this happen. And uh, so he starts sh sharing what God share, tells him to share, and the power comes and starts hitting people, and, and the rest is history. <laughs> but here's the important thing. Pastor Kilpatrick seen it, and he hollered, get in the river, and then pastor was laid out for many hours. And, I, you know, uh, he was laid out, and God just came down. Well, and that hop happened so often. In fact, uh, there was a, a known account 
the book, The God Chasers, yes. that Tommy Tenney, he was there for a service, and basically the pastor was at the podium, and it was a plexiglass, one of those podiums you can see through, and from what I've heard, that the power of God hit that podium, it struck it in, and broke it in two. Right. And the pastor fell under the power. It was under the power for hours. In fact, they had to drag him out of there. And people, when they pulled up into the parking lot to go to church, <laughs> they ran and they knew that something was going on. People yeah. didn't even want to go to church, were being directed by God to that place. So this happens often when God starts moving, that it, people just know and they, they just show up. Yes. So then I know, I didn't know, never go to Pensacola, but I know many people that flew there, and there would be lines outside the building. Is that right? But you waited a couple of years. How did you get over to Pensacola? Well, that's it. The, uh, two things right there quickly. I was reading when all that was going on, God got a hold of me through Promise Keepers. I went to the Promise Keepers in 97 where a couple, men, a couple million men came. And then um, and I was reading, and I started reading a book by... Tommy Tenney about being God chaser, and everybody says you're a God chaser, and people will ridicule you, and even the church will come after you for be chasing God. I tell people, you got to chase the Lord, you got to uh, go after God. So a friend of mine said, "Have you heard about that church over in Pensacola where people standing in line all day?" Hmm. And I'm like, "What you say?" Because see, before my Christ days, I'd go stand in line for all kind of stuff. But people just go to church, but stand in line for church? I'd never heard of such a thing. So my interest was piqued, and uh, I went over and checked it out, and I was told to get there by 2 o'clock in the afternoon or you wouldn't get in the main sanctuary. So I took me a fold-out chair, and I got in that line, and there was close to, you know, 2,000 people when I got there at 2 o'clock in the afternoon for 7 o'clock night service. And uh, all it took was one time for me, in that kind of thick presence of God, I was hooked. And there's a long story that, t that I tell of how I went nine times and God brought a certain person in my life and he told me to come through the back door and he was on the prayer team and, and then I went and got on the prayer team for nine months and got on the, I mean, went through the training and, and uh, was there part of the revival for nine months. Nine months being the birth, you know, birthing thing. I had to really want this, you know, which I did. Because well, and that's the thing. See, God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And what you're hearing is there's a thread of truth that, that you, you brought a chair and you waited in line, yeah. you know, and God was waiting to see. In fact, he's watching. It says his eyes are going to and fro yeah. to see uh, uh, he, to who is going to really seek him. Yes. And he says, if you seek him with all your heart, yeah. you'll find him. So you got touched by God in a dramatic way. You got on the prayer team. Now let me tell you the first, uh, the first moment because um, going and waiting in there, uh, getting into that many places, I sat in the balcony and I sat on the first row where you could oversee everything. And I seen the altar call that I ain't never seen in my life. Brother Steve giving that call, hurry, hurry, hurry. <laughs> so I uh, felt that. When Brother Steve would do that, it whew, sent out a wave, and people felt the urgency to get saved. Well, I was saved, but I was like, I was watching all these other people respond, and they were crowding the altar. And I sat up on the altar, and my friends with me, I said, look at this. People are clamoring to get to the altar. And I said, I told my friend, I want to be right in the middle of that. And, boy, I spoke that, prophesied that out from the balcony of Brownsville not knowing what was going to happen, and he put me right in the middle of it. How'd you get to You didn't jump off the balcony, did you? Man. <laughs> Stage I felt, dive off the balcony. I felt like it. I felt like jumping in the river because there were so many people there, I wouldn't hit the floor anyway. I told people there, when the power of God fell, people didn't worry about hitting the floor because when there they was thousands on the floor being hit by the power of God, literally. I mean, it'd be around you everywhere. So we had to learn how to lay people in cracks of other people and lay them on top of each other without hurting people because it wasn't like uh, catchers. You had catchers, but, I mean, God came, and you, you just uh, dealt with uh, the fallout of the Holy Ghost coming down. Well, you know, I hear somebody that's watching and saying, well, uh, this sounds good, but why isn't this happening today? Yes. You know, but I believe that this is breaking out all over the place. Yes, you know, there's is. moves of God that are getting ready. It's like these, what I see in the Spirit is like when you make popcorn, you know, you've got the butter and you've got the heat turned on, you're getting it. The Lord's been, you know, kind of setting the stage. You're getting it all heated up and 
we all been waiting, simmering, and all of a sudden, pop, 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 oh, pop, pop. Yes. The Lord's getting ready to pop, snap, crackle, and pop. Amen. And it's getting ready to pop all over the place. And Amen. it's going to look wild. And it's going to be in the streets, too. This isn't just for the church. This is out. Amen. But now you took this fire, and that's why you wore that red shirt. You said yes. it's about the fire. You took this fire, and you went into the streets with a red cross. I sure did. So where did you go? When did God give you that directive? This, this, minute, this TV show called The Cross TV, and I knew I heard the Lord this morning. I didn't know the name of it, and I wore the red. The Lord says, wear your Levitical clothing today. <laughs> And, uh, you know, after the, after the revival, I mean, you know, you experienced God like that week after week after week for years, which I did. Oh, man, when something starts to come to an end like that, people ask you about how it come to an end. Well, uh, that's another show for another time, I can tell you. But um, uh, Hurricane Katrina came, and I was on Biloxi, Mississippi. And uh, that hurricane hit, and I was blew away all the way up to the northwest and uh, settled down up above Seattle and Bellingham, Washington. Stayed there a year, and that was my Abraham moment. And God took me to Texas a year later, and I had a vision that a uh, shadow, I seen it with my own eyes, the shadow of a man on a cross, full size, on my, uh, uh, right out of my kitchen wall. So I seen it for 30 to 33 days along that time frame. And so I you would just kind of look at the wall and you'd see a vision of, of a cross well, I, with a man on it? Yeah, I woke up. I woke up one morning and there it was on the wall, a full-size cross. And I could see a sign and, and you know, everything, and the crown of thorns. I could see all the whole thing. And, and I said, wow, that's Jesus on the cross. And I was, you know, God gives me all them kind of wow moments. I like them. I look for them all the time. Looking for some more out here. <laughs> I've already had plenty, let me tell you. But, uh. And then, and then I seen it for another couple of days, and then the Lord spoke to me. He said, as long as you see this, pray one thing. And I said, Lord, well, that means I'm going to see it longer than these couple of days. What do you want me to pray? He said, that's your life count for the kingdom of God. He said, you pray that and don't pray anything else and be quiet for half hour. And I did. And I looked at it and kept watching it, and I just, Wow. And uh, it went away. It went away as quick as it came. It didn't, it didn't just slowly. It was like gone. So I told my pastor about it, and I was seeking God what that was all about. Didn't know. But three years later, God revealed to me on the streets in Picayune, Mississippi, at 107 degrees, when I seen another man carrying the cross. God was dealing with me that time. That was the Arthur Blessed movie coming out the cross. And I met Obadiah Franklin, a great friend of mine that carries the cross. And I seen him, and I was shell-shocked by what I seen on the street. So it's a long story, but God took me out there that afternoon. I put two fleeces before the Lord. He handled them both. And when I stood up from being in the hot sun at seven degrees with my friend's cross that had left and went away, I said, God says, I'm going to do this and hadn't done it in six years, but God told me to give you your cross. Well, that was fleece number one. Fleece number was two, when he would send someone that I would experience what happens on the street when nobody does that. And then there's this huge fella comes, and he says, will you pray for me? And he kneels on the ground right there by the street, and I start praying for him. And man, he starts crying, and I just feel the presence of God like I did at Brownsville. I said, wow, on here on the street, I stood up, and there was a shadow that I'd seen on the wall, my shadow. And the Lord says, you recognize that? And I said, yes, Lord. He said, I call you today to carry the cross. So I've carried the cross for over six years in 10 states, did it full time a year and a half, me and my wife living out of a, out of a car. We never spent the night in the car. God always give us favor at the hotel, but just one by one. I went from thousands of people. I tell people it's like Azusa, A to Z, USA. I said, I went from revival with thousands of people to one by one with a cross. What you get, you get your hands stretched out. God wants to reach thousands of people, but he wants to reach them one at a time. You're one by one. Well, you know, for those of you listening right now, I think this is a really important moment. I'm going to have Stacy look at the camera and literally give an appeal to heaven for you watching that you are going to come into the kingdom of God by speaking forth the words of life, by inviting him to come in. Stacy is an evangelist, and God has brought him into different states, carrying that cross, for over six years, and now I sense that he has a word for you. Stacy, look right at the camera 
and, and, and just for a couple minutes, you know, let the Holy Spirit, or as you say, the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Brother Ghost. Steve said that, boy, I, said, I tried that. When I started trying that, the power of God hit people. Okay, so look at the, look at the camera and let the Holy Ghost use you. Amen. Listen, this is the most important time of any, any broadcast, telecast. I remember watching Steve many times. And I was like, Lord, sitting over there, I said, I need them five minutes to speak into your life. I said, the Brownsville Revival touched me and the cross touched me. But they birthed Acts Again Ministry. That's what it is now. It's to get fired up people. You got to have your own Acts Again in your own life. If you're not affecting other people, you're not contagious. You must be contagious in these last days. God's going to pour out the Spirit. He says in Joel that all the people be touched. Are you being touched? Are you being set on fire? Most of y'all that watch Sister Mary, I believe the prophetics is so strong in her. I thank God that he allowed me to meet her. Listen, I've seen her website up there. It's a good website. She has that phone number. You need to call her and, get, and touch her. Get, get in touch with her and find out what God's doing. Listen, if you've never have made that call to ask Jesus to come into your life, this is the most important moment. If you, I don't know how you're tuning in or any way, this is your moment. This is your acts again moment. You got to act now to receive Jesus now, or it may be too late. We are living in the end times, and what God's going to do, he's going to be doing it hurriedly. And uh, when I started carrying the cross before I got the, the stuff to, to get the cross, he took me on the real train tracks, and I seen the train coming, and it was barreling down the tracks. And he said he was going to come like that. His glory was going to come like the glory train. But the sound that the train made after it went by, ding, 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 ding. We've all heard a fast train. He said that's what it's going to feel like for people that got left. They didn't, they didn't want to get on the train. They didn't want to get on the Jesus train, the glory train. They said, ah, I don't like this. I don't like that. You don't get to heaven unless you're washed in the red blood of the Lamb. You got to have your ticket to get in. I ride in track all the time, and you don't get on the train without a ticket. I'm trying to tell you today, you need to call her. You need to call somebody. You need to get a hold of Jesus. He's the conductor. You won't get to heaven. And Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Now, Steve did this, and that's what I'm going to leave you with. All you have to do is pray the simple prayer. Everybody wants to make a big thing out of it. The gospel's simple. He died for you. He, he bled for you. And all you have to do is say, Jesus, come into my life, change my heart, and make me a new person. Simple as that. You say, it's that simple? That's it. He knows your heart. Pray that prayer. He'll save you. He'll wash you with his blood. And then ask said, fill me with the Holy Ghost. I tell people, you need the fire. Be baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire so that you'll go out to the street, the Walmart, the gas station, wherever you go, be contagious. I want you to be contagious. Affect somebody else. Affect your family, your school, where you work. Do something. Do it for the Lord while you have time. Jesus' name. Awesome. Yeah. And, you know, those of you watching, you can see my website at the top of the screen. If you prayed that prayer, go to my website at marycrowley.com. It's spelled M E R I C R O U L E Y.com. And there's a place to write, write me. I also have a phone number on the website. And you can also go on to Facebook uh, and you can send me a message there as well. But now is the time, Stacey. We just have a couple more minutes left. Uh, you know, we're at the Azusa now. We're here in Los Angeles. Hallelujah. In two days from now, it'll be April 9, 2016. Ooh. And that'll be the 110-year anniversary of when the Azusa Street outpouring happened when a one-eyed African-American man named William Seymour came to Los Angeles. And tonight, we're going to be at the Bonnie Bray House. This is yes. a closed meeting. But this is where it all started. Yeah. So you just have a couple more minutes. What, what is one thing that's happened since you've been here? Just We only have a few minutes. Okay. Just that's coming to your mind really quick, just yeah. to, as a download for the closing Well, the out. honor to be at the gravesite today where William Seymour stepped off and went into heaven. And it says in 2 Kings chapter 13, verses 21, that there was such an anointing on Elisha's bones, you know, that someone was close by and the anointing came on him. And that person started walking around and came back to life. I know today that I was there at the gravesite for two and a half hours with my brothers, Brother David, Brother Marvin. Uh, we got a download from God uh, to 
push us out to wherever else we're going. And uh, to be in such an environment this week with thousands of people praying at one time, the sounds in heaven are going to just be opened up. We're, we're going to experience a great, great experience in the Lord. Amen. Well, Stacy, if people want to get in touch with you, how, how can they? Well, you know, I had a website and it got hacked. You know, when you're doing stuff for the Lord, <laughs> people hate you. Especially when you're doing something out there on the street like I was doing. So God's doing so much, I'm going to get another professional one done made. But you know what? Facebook and Periscope and all these things are so active that uh, uh, you can just reach me on my web, I mean, not website, but my email address. It's spelled Stacy, S T A C Y 5. That's the number of grace since the hand of God. Of course, that'd be my number, right? Four and five. Stacy 5 Mitchell at yahoo.com. Or you can just find me on Facebook right now. You can uh, do Stacey a film. Yeah, okay. yeah, you can just look there. Well, listen, thanks for coming on the program, Brother Stacy, and thanks for watching Now is the Time. Remember that now is the time. William Seymour, just in the last minute or two, I just want to finish up with this. He came here in 1906, but he died of a broken heart in his 50s because the movement that started just with a small group of people, it exploded around the world. People would come from all over the globe to get touched by the power and the fire of God at this little building called Azusa Street in downtown Los Angeles. And it erupted, and, and literally it could say about 700 million people can attribute their roots back to that time in history with the birthing of the Pentecostal movement. So let me tell you, what God can do with the little things, despise not the days of small beginnings, now is the appointed time. So remember, just be used by God. Do what Stacy said, invite him into your heart, but then let God use you as a son and daughter, and he will tell you where to go. He will lead and guide your footsteps. He will direct you with his eye, and he'll put you on fire so you can have fruit that remains. And you can be like Stacy. You can be like me, making history for the kingdom of God, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So remember, now is the appointed time. This is the greatest time, I believe, Stacy, to be on the earth. Oh, yeah. We're going to see the 7 billion people on this planet. I believe the harvest is at hand, and we're going to see millions and billions come into the kingdom, for such is the time is now. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon. God bless.